Greetings to you ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Shakespeare's YouTube channel. Uh, if you truly like uh, the content that I am uploading on this YouTube channel, please uh, give me thumbs up, that is uh, give me your likes. And uh, if you think that there is something that is that uh, needs to be corrected or added, please uh, drop your suggestions and comments in the comment section. And uh, if you feel that um, this content is relevant for someone else, please do share. And uh, most importantly, subscribe so that you do not miss out any new video that I upload on this YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, SQL database keys and um, SQL data insertion, SQL data updates. So. What we are mainly concerned about is uh, database uh, recordings, database recordings. That is, we want to work with uh, database table records or database records or data records. In other words, we will be dealing with the tuples or rows or records. So these three terms are the terms that are used to refer to the same thing. Tuple row and record uh, usually they are used as uh, to re they are used to, to refer this to the same thing so let's start with uh, keys let's start with database keys somebody may ask what is it that you call a database key a, a database key so as the name itself uh, is saying a database key keys as their name suggests, a, it is a, a, a key part of a relational database. It's a key part. It's an important part. It's a critical part of uh, a relational database. And uh, it is a vital part of the structure of a table. So there are two things, the table itself and the database as a whole. So a key plays a role for the a table or a relation or for entity and then it also re, uh, it also play a, a critical role for the um, relational database so in other words we are just saying a database key is a critical part of a relational database and is a vital part of the structure of a table so that's uh, the definition of what a database key is so like I said uh, keys are as their name suggests a part a key party or a critical party of a relational database and a vital part of the structure of a uh, database table so these keys they ensure that each record within a table can be uniquely identified by one or a combination of fields or columns within the table so they help enforce integrity for instance we have entity integrity uh, referential integrity and so forth and they also help uh, us to, uh, they help in identifying the relationship between the tables that is uh, we, we, we will be trying to get how this relation is linked to the other relation so the keys they play all those roles so there are there are certain types of um, database keys. Uh, we have um, these uh, types. There are main, three main types of uh, keys, and these are candidate keys. We have primary keys and foreign keys. And they also there's also an alternative key or an alternate key. Some they call it a secondary key, and as its name suggests as well it's an alternate or it's a secondary meaning to say um, it's a key that can also be used as primary key so it's a secondary key or an alternate primary key a secondary primary key so we have a primary key and as well we can have an alternate primary key or a secondary primary key so a secondary primary key and an alternate primary key is the same 
but you won't find it written secondary primary key but you find it written secondary key you won't find it written alternative key alternative primary key but you find it written alternate key so you need to be very careful with these terms so these are the three main types main types of um database keys that we have we have candidate keys we have primary keys and foreign keys so mainly uh all database keys they fall under these three um key types they fall under these three key types let's now look at um a super key some what what is it that we call a super key so a super key is any subset of attributes of a table it's any subset of attributes of a table so it's it's any subset so it's any group of uh, columns that exist in a certain database table but this group they can uniquely identify all the tuples of that table they identify all the tuples of that table so i'm just saying if we have uh since since uh, all the all the tuples in a, a relational database table since they are unique it means all the columns of that table all the columns a combination of all the columns gives us uh, a, a super key and then all subsets of that main set that is other columns or uh, uh, other columns of the table which can uniquely identify each record or each tuple or each instance of an entity we can call that a super key so it's different from the primary key and candidate keys in that only the minimal super keys are the candidate or primary keys what do we mean by that we are saying the, the, the super key is different from the primary key and candidate keys in that the only uh, it's the, in that the primary keys or candidate keys they consist of uh, minimal super keys so by that I mean a super key we cannot say a super key is a primary key or is a candidate key you will see when we, we, we when I will, uh, elaborate more a super key is any subset of uh, any subset or any set of columns that can uniquely identify a record or a tuple or an instance of an entity and a primary key or an, a, a candidate key is the minimal or is the is the subset with the minimum number of columns for that table so uh, a primary key is the minimal super key is a minimal super key by minimal super key we mean a super key is a subset or is any subset of uh, uh, um, attributes of a table that uniquely identify a table a, a, a record so the minimum number of columns or the minimum subset that is uh, if we have let me give you an example say we have uh, four columns and then if we combine all the four columns we can uh, uniquely identify a record if we combine uh, three col three of the columns we can uniquely identify a, 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 a record and if we combine two columns it means we can identify a, you can you we can uniquely identify a record but if we have only one column we cannot identify um, we cannot identify a, a a record so it means these the minimum number of columns is two and these two columns that's what we are calling it's an it's a super key as well since it's a it's a subset uh, of uh, attributes of a table which uniquely identify a, a, a any a, a record or records in a in a database table but this is now um what we are calling a, a, a candidate key or a primary key you will see when we start to talk about um, primary keys and um, candidate keys so by this we mean uh, we can perform um, 
let me give you the definition so this is uh we can call a super key any combination of fields within a table that uniquely identifies each record within that table so we can form primary or candidate key from a super key when we remove all the attributes that are not necessary for its uniqueness so since we said all the columns if you combine all the columns for any table which is uh, in a relational database all the columns or, or, or that set is a super key and then we can remove some of the columns that are not necessary for unique identification of each record by doing that <clears throat> we will be forming a primary key or a candidate key so in essence all primary or candidate keys are super keys but not all super keys are primary or, or candidate keys so by the formal definition of um, a table we know that uh, the the tuples of a relation are all unique like i said in a in any relational database in any uh, relational database table all the records or all the tuples are unique so the set of all attributes itself is a super key like i said earlier so a candidate key is a super key but a super key is not um a candidate key a super key is not a candidate key i mean a super key is not always um is not always a candidate key so that's that's uh, a super key for you that's a super key for you and then let's look at uh, super key examples I, I i need to to use the tables that we created in our previous lectures so if um you haven't watched our previous lectures please make sure that you click on this link that is appearing at the top right corner of uh, this uh, content so that you can go back and watch part one and part two uh, of uh, what we are doing right now so this table is structs table i'm sure everybody is having this table in their mysql database so that's what we are having tracks and our super key is range num make model the first default super key is a combination of all table columns so range num combined with make combined with model combined with service and mileage is our super key is our first super key and then here are the examples we have we can ident we can uniquely identify uh, all the tuples using regnum and make we can also identify all tuples using regnum and model we can identify all the tuples using regnum and service we can also identify with uh, all the tab or table columns like i said earlier we have regnum model make mileage and service so here i'm just saying we have a, 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 a column which is being combined with other columns to make subsets of um, of uh, the whole set of the um, mother set that we are having which is all the columns of this table so if we combine this uh, um, column with the unique attribute and combine it with uh, any other column we can form a super key so that's what we are having here so these are the examples of uh, what we can call a super key so if you are asked can you give me an example of a super key the first one is to list all the columns of a table and then you say we here we have uh, a super key and then we can have um any subsets that you can formulate so here i just gave you four but you can have more maybe you can say rich num model and mileage rich num uh, model uh, and service rich num and all those uh, making all those combinations to come up with uh, super keys all right so let's now talk about what a candidate key is what is a candidate key so a candidate key a candidate from from this i, I, I want to give you a literal example 
let's say we are attending a, a job interview and we are seven all of us and let's say let's just say there's only one person needed for the job and we are seven uh, attending or invited for the for the interview only one will win the job but all the seven of us we are all candidates what does that mean all the candidates all of us each one of us can get the job each one of us is so can be can be can get the job so it means they have uh, uh, perused our, super, uh, our our CVs and ob observed that all of us all the seven of us each of uh, the seven is suitable for the job but they will not want to get the best that is the main relevant one for the job the main or the most suitable one for the job so that's what we are saying here all the candidate keys so a candidate key by definition is uh, a subset of a super key let me just give you this first before i give you the definition so a candidate is a subset of a super key because we have removed unnecessary attributes tab attributes that are not necessary for unique identification of records in a database table so a candidate key is a single field or the list get this correct is a a candidate key is a single field or the least combination of fields that uniquely identifies each record in a table so that's what a candidate key a candidate key is a single field or the minimum combination or the least combination of fields that uniquely identifies uh, each record in a table right so um let's uh, talk about um the relationship between a candidate key and a super key a candidate key is a super key with no repeated attributes a candidate key is a super key with no repeated attributes and those uh, those attributes that are removed are the ones that uh, we have said they are not necessary for for unique unique identification of um, database table records or attribute uh, or tuples so a table uh, can have multiple candidate keys but only a single primary key can be selected so like i said only one person is needed for the job but we have seven candidates so from the seven we can choose one so meaning to say we have we can have only one person for the job and we can have several candidates for that uh, same job so the properties of uh, here's the definition of uh, the formal definition of what a candidate key is so a candidate key is any minimal set of attribute of attributes which can uniquely identify a tuple or record within that table or relation so here are the properties of um, properties of uh, a candidate key it must contain unique values no repeated uh, values for this uh, for this column that we are calling candidate key so a candidate key may have multiple attributes must not contain now values it should contain minimum fields to ensure uniqueness it must uniquely identify each record in a table so that's uh, that's a primary key um, for us theoretically now let's look at uh, examples candidate key examples candidate key examples here we have our um, table code drivers and i'm sure that everybody is having this uh, uh, query or this SQL command right we are saying we have our our primary key here which is uh, ID num and then we have phone so phone is unique is having unique and then ID num is selected as is uh, selected as primary key and primary key by definition is 
or by default any primary key column by default is having unique values so our candidate keys that the candidate keys that we have from this query includes id num and phone so we can say phone can be our our can be our our primary key id num can be our, our primary key but we have selected id num from this list because it's the one that suits most for for driver identification because we need to know uh, the id number of, of the driver that's uh, how we selected uh, the primary key but let's now see the table that you have right now if you have been following our our video tutorials it means you have email address updated as well so you will see as we go so this is our first candidate if you assume that we haven't selected this as um, as id now and then we have another candidate which is um, phone because it's unique but now we have another um, another candidate which is email address no two drivers can share the same email address but from our definition here we didn't define it as unique so two drivers from this definition two drivers or more can share the, email, uh, the same email address but we have thought about it when we were creating our database and we have um, ensured that email address uh, columns values must be unique so that's why we came up with so you see here we are having a broken broken line to show that un email address is not defined as unique so it's not a, a candidate key but it's it can possibly be a candidate key if we do what if we alter the table and modify email address and add unique constraint to it that's when uh, it qualifies to be a candidate key if you remember we have uh, executed this uh, command earlier in our second uh, video tutorial so that's uh, a candidate key for us let's now look at um, another key another key which which i think everybody is aware of in, or is fully understanding it we have a primary key so a primary key is I, I think this one is well known let me just give you the definition here say a primary key is a candidate key that is most appropriate to be the main reference key for the table so as its name suggests it is the primary key of reference it's the key of re reference for the table for the relation to point out or uniquely identify instances of an entity so uh, entity integrity is enforced and um, the key is also used throughout the database to help establish relationships or links with other tables as with any candidate key the primary key must contain unique values must never be now and uniquely identify each record in the um, in the in the in the database table so there can be more than one candidate key like i said earlier in a relation out of which one can be chosen as the primary key we can have seven candidates for the job but only one can be selected for the job so that's uh, the candidate key for us and uh, let's just look at um that's the primary key sorry that's the primary key for us let's look at uh, primary key examples primary key examples right we have drivers here and our primary key is uh, id num selected from the list of um from the list of candidate keys so that's our um, primary key and our other keys they are not selected so those that fail the interview they will not get the job so we cancel them like that even if they are unique even if they are they do not repeat values in their columns they are not primary keys you only select one as primary key <laughs> let's now look at uh, foreign key 
so what can you say is a for, is a foreign key a foreign key is generally a, a primary key from one table that um, appears as a field in another table where the first table in the first table i normally call the first table as the primary as the parent uh, table or parent relation and um, the other table where the primary key is appearing is the secondary or child table so the primary key of another table that is appearing on the other table is what we are calling the foreign key so here is the formal definition a foreign a foreign key is a primary key from one table that appears as a field in another table where the first table has a relationship to the second but now let's uh, talk about it in this way but i think i've talked about it earlier in our previous uh, video tutorial so if you want more about uh, that you can um, get to the videos and the link to the videos the links to the videos are provided in the description so let's look at uh, what examples so here we have what we have uh, if you remember from our previous lecture we have uh, this kind of um, we have this kind of relationships between our tables let's just get to this point this is our previous um previous slide where we are having these relationships we have our tables like that and they are connected like that so here we are having range num range num is a primary key in truck table and then range num in in truck driver is um which is existing in truck stable as primary key now it's a second it's 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 it's, it's, it's a foreign key same applies id num is a primary key in uh, drivers and then it's a foreign key in truck driver same applies to ttid which is a primary key in truck driver and foreign key in um, trips so which of these are the foreign keys I think everybody knows this because we've talked about it in our first uh, first um, video tutorial in this series. So though these are the foreign keys, ID num, range num, and TDID. So clear examples. So foreign key constraint identifies uh, the relationships between the database tables. Uh, this is our, our previous uh, lecture as well, uh, in, uh, emphasizing on um, foreign key. I don't think we need to take much time on this. We don't need to have much time on this. It's a prime in a parent table. That's our primary key, and in the uh, child table, we have our our foreign key. Right, so that's uh, that's uh, the relationship that we have. We have our primary key. We have our foreign key, is uh, illustrated here. It's illustrated there. So that's uh, the foreign key for us. Let's now look at um, secondary or alternate key. So, like I said uh, earlier, I think I've defined this. A table may have one or more choices for the primary key collectively these are known as candidate keys as we discussed earlier um, one is selected as the primary key those not selected those that are not selected are known as secondary keys or alternate keys or alternative keys so uh, this is the alternate key definition so like I said earlier, we have seven candidates for the job, but only one can pass and get the job. So if somebody passed the interview and is selected for the job, we say that is the primary key. But maybe there's another job somewhere else. We can take the next best. So all those that uh, that have uh, all those that have been interviewed. Are the candidates so we can say we have uh, 
we've tried to get uh, the first one in which we didn't get him we we lost him to another organization which is paying more we do the same for the second we do the same for the third fourth fifth and sixth it means the seventh one can still get the job if uh, he performed or he, if he or she performed well uh, to get the job since he or she is the, the candidate so that's uh, the alternate key for us so here are the examples of alternate keys so if i may ask you can list these examples because i think uh, the definition was clear so the pr uh, primary key cannot be selected as uh, an alternate key because it's already a primary key that's a selected selected uh, primary key that's why you're having a broken line underlining it and uh, a, a red cross over id num as a candidate as an alternate key so it's not an alternate key but phone yes it's an alternate key or a secondary key because we can use it as um, as primary key in place of all other primary key in place of id num we can also use id num for as long as we define it uh, as unique so uh, that's a uh, uh, alternate key for us and then now uh, we have um, simple key we have simple key we have uh, composite key we have compound key so these three they are different let's start with uh, a simple key so a simple key is any of the keys described before that is a primary secondary or foreign key that may uh, comprise one or more fields that may comprise of one or more fields so a simple key i mean uh among all the uh, the keys that we have defined earlier that is uh, the primary secondary and foreign they may comprise of uh, one or more uh, or more columns but a simple key uh, consists of a single field to uniquely identify a record in its parent uh, relation that is uh, the table so a simple key is a primary key which uses only one column or one field or one attribute to uniquely identify a record or a tuple in addition the field in uh, itself cannot be broken down into other fields for instance we have id num that we have talked about which uniquely identifies a particular driver and uh, is a single field and therefore that's a simple key no two drivers would have uh, the same id num so that's it for simple key so here are simple key examples we have id number definitely is our example And then uh, let's now talk about the, the compound key. Compound key. Let's let's not let's not um, let me do it this way. Right. We now want to talk about compound key. So we said a simple key is a primary key which uses only one field and now we have uh, a compound key so a compound key is a primary key consisting of more than one simple keys but there's something that you need to note i said a compound key consists of more than one field to uniquely identify a record a compound key is distinguished from a composite key we will talk about a composite key later a compound key is different from uh, a composite key in that uh, each field which makes up the primary key is also a simple key on its own so we are saying a compound key is is uh, a primary key which consists of more than one uh, field more than one field but each of the fields that are making the compound key they are simple keys or we can use them as uh, primary keys that is each of these columns can be 
a single key so that's uh, what a, a compound key is so from our our from our table definition earlier we didn't define um any compound key that's why we're having a, a query that we are, uh, that we are about to run so uh, let's open our um, let's open our um, let's open our workbench let's open our workbench Let's open our webpage. Here is our webpage. So, uh, what you are supposed to do is, I'm sure some of you might not have, um, I don't have the the previous queries that we have executed. So what you can do is you can download uh, the, the links, the, the, the SQL query for video tutorial one and the other query for video tutorial number two from the links provided in the description. So what you do is uh, you, you need to, or if you have uh, followed, but you have distracted or destroyed some of the properties, you may download the uh, SQL queries from um, from the links provided in the description and you can run them so I will open the SQL query so my download folder is this one right so the ones that you are supposed to run are these ones the one this one this is for uh, video tutorial number one so you run this SQL query these SQL queries so you execute it it will delete and then create the new database with the structure that we that we are expecting you to have so you execute and it's running here so it will delete this database it has been deleted and you see that uh, It's executing successfully and uh, giving us some warnings where we need to be warned. <laughs> it's still running. So if you download the first query, you download it and execute it. Right, it's done executing on my side. So I can refresh and check. I now have the table, and the database and the, its tables, but we do not have users table so you will need to execute the second query that uh, is the link to that query is also in the description and the query name is the query name is this one track management db creation query 2 you open that then you execute it this is what we have done this is what we did on um, video tutorial 2 this is what we did on video tutorial 2 you can execute it and it is supposed to run successfully so once it's done running it's running here right it's done running but it will it's having um, is having a, a, it's having a what can I call it? A warning. Yes, it's a warning. It's having a warning here. So this warning is all about um, what we did here on email. So we've uh, we have modified email address to unique. But we have done this earlier in this query here. That's why it's telling us it's duplicate whatever, whatever. So that's it. Uh, so let's now run 
let's now run uh, the query to create let's run the query to modify something so that we can have uh, let's modify one of our um, so you can create new you can create new SQL table or new query table so we want to alter tracks table so let's open tracks table and see what we have let's just let's refresh so we now have users let's refresh here let's click on tracks so that you see it below here uh, left bottom side so what we now want to do is we want to alter the tracks table this is the tracks table so that we have so you can see that we have primary key range num is the primary key only range num is the primary key but we want to add another column that can be used or that can be used as a primary key on its own that is we want to add a, 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 a simple key a simple alternate key so you get the combination of terms that I'm being used that I'm using right now. So we want to create a simple uh, primary key, a simple alternate key. So what we will do is with alter uh, first is use database and what's the name of the database? Use use track management. DB so that the database that we want to use and then what we want to use it for we want to alter the table that is called uh, tracks and then uh, these tracks what do we want to do we want to add a column so we want to add a column uh, for these these are tracks so we can say track and just call it track vehicle identification number that's VIN, so I can add a, com a comment here to say VIN stands for vehicle identification number. And so that's just a comment, and I can put it below there. So VIN and VIN is of this type of worker, you now know what worker stands for. And then it's unique and uh, not now. So that's the column that we have added. And then what do we want to do now? So let me put this comment above. Yeah. Right. So what do you want to do with uh, with this? We want to drop or remove the previous primary key. So we can drop what? Drop primary key. And then after dropping a primary key, we now want to add what we are calling the, uh, the, the, the compound key. So we say add the primary key. So in this context, add and drop are acting as uh, opposite terms. And then our primary key now is a compound key which is a combination of uh, simple keys so vehicle identification number can can be used as a primary key so uh, this is what we are calling as compound So that's the component key. So let's execute and observe what will happen. So check here our table. Range now is our primary key, and then we have executed the ultra table uh, SQL command. Then let's refresh and check. We can see that we have range now underlined VIN underlined and it's having pk pk which stands for primary key so we now have a compound key which is having range num and vin vehicle identification number so we are done with uh compound key so that's the query that uh, we have um, that's the query that we have here that's the query that we have here
so a compound key compound key examples so that's the the query that we've executed in read now and vin that's the compound key that we have this is what you have defined so let's now talk about um composite key so a composite key consists of more than one field to uniquely identify a record but the keys the the the, the, the columns that are used to define the primary key they are not simple keys or they cannot by themselves uniquely identify uh, a record or a tuple so here is so by this we mean a composite key differs from a compound key in that one or more of the attributes which make up the key are not simple keys in their own right so at least one of the keys that formulate composite key uh, cannot uniquely identify uh, table tuples or table records so composite key examples so let's look at cam uh, examples here so what we're going to do is since this one is executed we've executed this let's comment it out so that we do not run it twice Let's now um, let's work with uh, this table. This table. All right. Let's work with the uh, user table to create a, a a composite key. So what we do is we alter table. In the table that we want to alter is users. You can see that in users we have um, F name is unique. F name is table. This F name is unique since it's bolded there. That's what I'm assuming, right? So we have ultra table users. Then what do you want to do with users? We want to add. It doesn't have any primary key. We do not have any PK here. Add um, primary key, and the primary key is having F name combined with lname and username so that's our primary key so yeah yeah uh, we now have here we now have what our we now have our Composite key. So that's the composite key for us. Let's execute it and observe what will happen. Look here, it will change. We are running. It's executed successfully. Let's let's um, refresh. You can see that we have three uh, columns that are defining our composite key. So these are the three. These are the three columns used to define our composite key all right uh, these are the three attributes that we have used um, to define our composite key so that's it for today that's it for today thank you very much for being with me here may god bless you and uh, please uh, truly like if you like uh, the content that I've given you and uh, give me some comments subscribe and share enjoy the rest of your day goodbye